God's Wisdom for a Fair and Just World by Dr. Jim Richards, Chapter 19. The Power of Godly Influence. The great seduction destroying our world is the mystery of iniquity cloaked in the promise of a fair and just world of love and peace. The last 70 years of indoctrination into relativism has made us susceptible to the destructive logic that the end justifies the means. The truth, however, reveals that the means don't justify the end. They're just a preview of the end. The means being employed to create a fair and just utopian society expose the lie. There is an important biblical principle called the law of the seed. This is an irrefutable law governing all things spiritual, physical, emotional, and relational. Jesus taught that failing to accept the law of the seed would make it impossible to understand any of the parables of the kingdom. Mark 4.13 Although there are many subtleties, the law of the seed starts with one simple reality. The seed you plant determines the fruit. The seed of deceit cannot bring forth the fruit of honesty. Injustice cannot produce justice. Wrath and violence cannot make a peaceful world. A second ignored dynamic of the seed is... One seed always produces many more seeds of its own kind. Therefore, as Jesus said that if you don't plant new seeds, you will get more of what you've got. The violence that brings forth the new world order means violence will multiply exponentially once it starts to bear fruit. We've lost touch with the fact that God's nature The one thing that motivates all his commandments and actions is a love so deep and pure that there are no words to describe it. There's no deceit in anything God says or does. There's no unrighteousness. His warnings are not the intimidation of wrath as punishment. They are to enlighten us to the danger, allowing us to choose a different path. God was in the process of delivering the children of Israel from the idolatrous nation of Egypt. Much like God is trying to deliver us from the grips of evil and lawless world. Had the Israelites trusted and obeyed God's wisdom, they could have arrived in Canaan in 11 days. Instead, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. This reveals another amazing secret. Righteousness can bring us into the promises of God much faster than we have imagined. The theme of the book of Exodus is, Be holy because I am holy. Contrary to centuries of religious dogma, the underlying meaning of holy is to be uncommon. God was unlike any of the gods in Egypt. He was not common. The pagan gods were wrathful. People made sacrifices as a mean to garner favor and escape the wrath of their gods. God was not like any of those gods. God is love. Sadly, the Israelites did what he warned them not to do. They interpreted his commandments, feasts, and sacrifices based on what they believed about other gods. All the hardships that befell them occurred because they refused to believe his promises and apply the wisdom of his word, independent of personal religious interpretation. Moses was already struggling with the unbelief and hard-heartedness of the Israelites, which would have disqualified him from leading them into the promised land. But God was about to deliver the most compassionate, liberating, moral code ever heard in the ancient world. God could not risk misinterpretation by his chosen leader. This was the code of social justice that became known as the law and the commandments. 
It would take volumes to explain all the freedoms given to the nation of Israel that were previously never applied in any society. It would be this code of social justice that would be so radically different, it would reveal the character and nature of the Creator to the world. The nations of the world would see God manifest in the people who lived by this code. Unfortunately, the Israelites did not believe or apply the law the way God presented it. They turned it into a fear-based means of judging and controlling others. God did not give the law as a means of making anyone righteous. It was a way for a person to identify if they were walking in love, i.e., treating others with respect. It was an outward description of how we would treat one another when love is in our hearts. God told the Israelites to be like him. The commandments God gives man are the same injunction he observes in relating to man. Unlike the pagan gods, there wasn't one code of justice for God and a higher code of justice for the worshiper. Moses was about to receive what would be the most liberating code of social justice ever given. If he misinterpreted or misapplied it, man would be no better. Before Moses could lead as God would lead, he had to have something change in his heart. Moses requested to see God's glory, Exodus thirty-three eighteen. I have to wonder what Moses expected to see and what did he hope it would do for him. When a king would show his glory, it would usually come down to a display of power. Did Moses expect to see God's power in a way that would give him courage to lead these difficult, rebellious people? I don't know, but I'm reasonably sure Moses did not see what he expected. God's response to Moses' request almost seems as if God wasn't listening. However, God is a heart God. He hears our words, but responds to the cry of our hearts. Sometimes words reflect what we think we should say when our heart is crying for something far more relevant. Just a few days earlier, Moses made another request. I want to know your ways, Exodus thirty-three thirteen. Moses knew he needed something, but like many believers, he assumed to know what he needed to experience to know God's ways. So he proceeds to request to see God's glory. As always, God looked past the limitations of Moses' word and answered the cry to his heart. The primary distinction between Moses and the rest of the Israelites was that they were content to see his deed, but Moses wanted to understand his ways. 21st century Christians may cry out for God to fix problems, but the leaven of iniquity makes them believe there is a path to God's deeds other than walking in his ways. Only the applications of God's ways will end this present global destruction. God's response to the request was, quote, I will make all of my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Exodus thirty-three nineteen. If God had been common, i.e., like the gods of Egypt, he would have displayed something to provoke fear and terror. Instead, he revealed his goodness. God has always been a faith God, and faith works because we know his every action is motivated by love. We only trust God to the degree that we believe his goodness. Religion has influenced us to believe the most significant manifestation of God's power is judgment. However, when we enter the epicenter of God's power, the holiest of holies, we don't discover a judgment seat. 
we find the mercy seat. James wrote, quote, Mercy triumphs over justice, James 2.13. It is the goodness of God that leads to repentance, not the wrath of God. No one is qualified to lead God's people until goodness becomes the power of their influence. <laughs>